There's that opening scene in Lawrence of Arabia when Peter O'Toole gets on his, I think it's a Vincent or a Norton, he goes zipping down the road to his death. When I ride this bike, other than the death part, that's the type of roads I want to do, these little roads. You watch online all these videos of these Indian guys taking these old bullets, class of 500s off-road, and you wonder how the hell can they do that? The bike's not light. It's not high. <laughs> but it's got grunt, and I think that's how they do it. You just hold on. This is it. This is where this bike lives. 40 miles an hour, zippy little roads. Thumping away. This bike is small. When you ride it, it feels small. It feels like a little dirt bike. When you see a picture of yourself on it, you look like the bear in the circus riding that tiny little tricycle. It feels like a badass motorcycle. The noise, the grunt, the ergonomics. Size-wise small, it's heavy like a big bike. It's really heavy. When you ride a Royal Enfield, you have to teach yourself how to ride a motorcycle again. When you're used to riding an Italian bike, or a Japanese bike, or a German bike, you pull that accelerator and you let it run out almost to red line and it'll keep accelerating it'll have that power Royal Enfield you have to learn how to shift early because if you run it out it just kind of gets tired loses its breath it's like an old time Looney Tune cartoon this is the 2016 model so last year with Euro 3 regulations so it has a rear drum brake, single caliper front brake, single disc. The 2017s had to comply to the Euro 4 regulations. So they have dual disc brakes and ABS. This is fuel injected, this is EFI fuel injectors imported to India by Royal Enfield from Japan. The Classic 500 is the bike that Enfield used to launch its new global initiative. It's inspired by the bullets that have been made uninterrupted since the early 1900s. The downsides of the bike, other than the kind of loss of breath and the aspiration at the top end is some of the build quality, some of the materials that are used. The chrome's not all that resistant to pitting or rust. All of the little screws and fittings, they all rust. The rims develop rust on the surface if you let the bike sit for a week. My biggest hang-up is the paint quality. I went for the matte squadron blue and the paint is very, very soft. I mean, just the keys rattling on them chip the paint. The fit of some of the side panels where it, over the fuse box or the uh, battery, you gotta kind of negotiated in but if you're negotiating you're chipping the paint some of the bolts and some of the wiring harnesses and things that you see underneath 
you could tell our budget. Generally that's all fine because the bike was 4,300 pounds new with a warranty. Oh, you can't beat that. Let's talk about vibration. There's a lot. A lot of vibration right up into your hands. Right up into your ass. Another reason why it's not a touring bike. Because if you're not used to a bike that vibrates, your hand's gonna fall asleep. Look at the sheep running from the sound. They don't know what's going on. Every bike I've owned, except for the GS, has vibrated at speed. This vibrates at any speed. So I've kind of got dead nerves in my hand from years of just muscling through. But if you don't like vibration in your handlebars, you're not going to like this bike. It's a single cylinder. It goes up and down. A V-twin has opposing pistons fore and aft to minimize the vibration of the bike. There's no rubber mounting on these engines as well. This is just bolted to the frame. So you're feeling every one of those thumps. They call them thumpers. And you're feeling every single thump. So the complaints will be lack of power, the complaints will be vibrations, the complaints will be lack of technology, build quality, soft paint, it's still a fantastic motorcycle.